so hello guys welcome back to my channel and today i'm going to talk about uh, a terminology or concept named as reproducibility and reproducibility is very very important in mlops world it makes sure that your ml model is consistent across different life cycle which means uh, whatever level of performance we are getting during development phase it should be same in staging or testing phase and it should carry forward the same level of performance in live prediction that is in production okay so that is very uh, that is one of the very important reason why we need to have a reproducible pipeline in place another thing is like when uh, your model is running in production and you observed okay there is a need to uh, retrain the model and deploy the newer version and you deploy the newer version right then what happens right uh, your newer version is not giving you the optimal level of performance in production right then uh, because then again uh, training of newer uh, further or newer version will take some time and then you want to uh, immediately roll back to the previous version because you observed that a uh, previous version was even more performing uh, than to the current version and you want to roll back right so that that time how you'll roll back if you have deployed the complete pipeline uh, then only you can roll back if you have not deployed the complete pipeline then roll back will be very difficult and it will you can still do but it will be a time taking process right so that's where like reproducibility helps us to achieve all these things very uh, efficiently and very quickly so let's understand like how we can achieve this reproducible ml pipeline ml or data pipeline right so for that uh, this uh, today's video is all about so let me expand this block so uh, again uh, the agenda is like uh, we will be uh, going through the step by step process so this is a live demo basically i will be doing everything hands on so you can also start your notebook and you can execute the code along with me so that it will help you the understand the concept uh, in a more detailed manner okay so let's start basically so the very first thing uh, how i start the live demo basically we need to create the conda environment so again um, uh, i have written the steps so i will share this notebook basically so you can uh, refer that so we need to uh, set up the conda environment so you, this is a command with that you can create the conda environment i mean you are in ml world so i'm assuming you all know these things so i'll not go through in detail but if anybody is new then steps are mentioned and uh, with elaboration so you can just go through okay and once you have created the conda environment then you need to install these libraries so these are the uh, important libraries for today's uh, uh, session okay the very first thing is like dvc live so dvc live helps us to uh, do the experiment tracking so i have already created videos on ml flow experiment tracking so that is another tool and dvc is another tool for experiment tracking and that's where like uh, dvc live helps us okay and then pandas of course uh, some data manipulation and pyaml so we'll have our uh, hyper parameters and configuration related things uh, listed in a yaml file so we need to read that yaml file and for that uh, we'll be using pyaml okay and then scikit learn for model training and scipy matplotlib these all you know and then dvc gs so this is nothing but uh, i will be using a, a google cloud bucket as a remote storage for data versioning okay so i have already created a, a video on data data version control how to version your data with the help of dvc okay so that you can uh, watch i mean that you could think of a prerequisite for this video so uh, for that like uh, for data versioning i will be using this uh, remote storage okay and once you all uh, install this thing then you can of course uh, uh, do a jupyter notebook and of course i am assuming you have also installed pip install notebook so that jupyter notebook is available and then you simply install uh, create, start jupyter notebook with the help of this command okay the moment you uh, uh, hit this command then it will open something like this and in my case i have all these uh, uh, things available inside that uh, project directory but in your case it could be blank or whichever project directory you are referring okay so here uh, so no need to go through all so all is not important basically i am i will be explaining this part and this part these two file okay so reproducible machine learning i have open and text text classification also i have open okay so uh, i will start from the very scratch guys so for example as a data scientist or as a nlp engineer or whatever okay we uh, most of the time uh, do uh, model training uh, code in uh, jupyter notebook right that's the our ide preferred ide so that's where here if you see so we have all the code for uh, pre data preparation feature engineering and then model training and then model evaluation in the jupyter notebook right so uh, once uh, we are ready with our model training code then uh, it comes in deployment okay if we are happy with the model performance right so uh, what happens like how to take our this whole uh, jupyter notebook code to the production so how to convert this code into the pipelines 
and so that they can be re reproducible and then take that to the production that's the agenda basically okay so before jumping to that let me quickly uh, explain uh, or go through this uh, uh, sort of code I i'm not so here agenda is not to explain the uh, machine learning training guys so i'm assuming that all you already know the agenda is like once you have all this code available to so how to create the uh, reproducible pipeline okay so to, before that i'll very quickly go through so the very first uh, uh, thing what we want to do basically the prepare the data so uh, what this uh, model will look like and what we are doing uh, here okay so let me uh, show you the uh, uh, that uh, data how data looks like basically so in uh, my vs code so i have opened this data.xml so what this all about so here in this data i have a different queries from the user so queries means you can think of your quora or stack overflow where we put the query and then we get the answer from somebody else right and this query could uh, so for example these are the from the technical ml world so this query could belong to the r programming language this query could belong to the uh, python programming this query could belong to the ml world uh, nlp uh, uh, computer vision reinforcement learning and blah blah many different things okay so that's where Every row denote in XML format, every row denotes one specific query for one user. Okay, so that's why these IDs are unique and you can ignore post type ID, accepted answer ID, this all you can ignore. So, here if you see, there is a body section, this is right. So, if I scroll a little bit right side, see in the body section, so for example, I want to use a code and blah blah blah. and Second user is asking, suppose I have a vector that is nested in a data frame one or two label, then further he's asking some uh, query, okay. So likewise, and then uh, we have, so if I just search for tag, okay, then we have something called tag, for example, this, right? So then inside tag, it is mentioned, okay, which uh, area this query belongs to, for example, this query belongs to .NET and math region, okay. If uh, another tag you said, so it is saying, okay, arrays, Okay, and then if I just mention another tag, then it's saying C++, right, and C, and then another tag where it is, so it is saying R, okay, like that. So like that, we have different tags, and it is tagged as, uh, like, which... Uh, area or which field this query belongs and that's where we want to classify these uh, queries uh, in one particular area so in our case we'll be classifying in for example uh, whether this belongs to our language or not okay so that's what we are doing so that's where here in a process uh, post basically i am just uh, passing the input lines from that data xml and then target tag is r basically we want to classify for uh, r and then split ratio is like uh, 80 20 percent for uh, that uh, test and training data right <clears throat> and here i'm generating this uh, folder basically where i'll be keeping this uh, training and test data and then some bit of logic and that's where i'm exp extracting uh, id label label is like whether it is r or not that's zero or one and then title body and then text okay text will finally include the title plus body so that's how i'm just uh, pre-processing the data so i'm not going in detail about explaining this code basically because my focus is like how to convert this code into the pipeline okay so that's where but to have that uh, let's uh, have the context as well so for context uh, uh, reasoning i am explaining this okay so uh, now our data is prepared and it, it is stored and then next thing is like we need to generate the features because we cannot directly work on textual data so that's where we need to kind of create the embeddings and sparse matrix for that uh, uh, input text file. So that's where I'm reading the data in the data frames and then generate and save train features. So we are having the train CSV and then test CSV. So for train as well as test CSV, we'll be generating the sparse matrix, right? So how we can generate, we can use uh, the bag of word approach and then convert the TFID factorizer and then finally save that one, right? So once we have this TFID calculators, we can call the save matrix method and then it will generate the sparse matrix. So that's what we are doing here, okay? And then same thing we will be doing the for test features and then we are just saving this okay and then here we are calling these two methods okay so now our features are generated and then uh, for model training we are simply uh, using a random forest classifier and these are the kind of uh, sort of uh, hyper parameters and then here uh, we are just doing the training and then after training uh, so we are calling and then we are saving the, um, uh, the model right so i'm assuming this all you know right and then finally, uh, evaluation. So this is the code for evaluation. So kind of we are gen uh, generating the confusion matrix and uh, predicted class, predicted class probability, and uh, ROC, AUC, feature importance, everything, right? And then uh, finally, we are having the uh, path where we are storing this uh, model and then all the metrics. So this is all basically what we do as a, a data scientist, right? So suppose uh, our uh, this uh, 
code is ready in the notebook okay so now the main chunk of uh, 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 concept will start so now how to convert this into the uh, data uh, data and ml pipeline to have the reproducible uh, feature in place okay so now let's convert these one by one so and again you guys see here so for example here a lot of things uh, for example if you go to a model training so for example these are the uh, parameters right and here i am kind of hard coded these parameters but uh, during reproducibility, you need to pass these parameters from uh, some external uh, uh, either command line or from external configuration so that you don't need to change the code part, but uh, you just need to uh, handle this externally so that uh, in the configuration file, you just change these parameters and you run uh, the reproducible pipeline and it will run that chunk of code wherever it is impacted, right? So that's where like while creating the data pipeline, we have to separate these all hard-coded parameters and this path and everything uh, in the separate uh, YAML file. That's where I have uh, asked you to install the YAML file, right? So let's do, uh, let's start our activity one by one. So let me collapse them and uh, let me open these uh, with the Visual Studio, okay? So here, uh, so let me uh, have this side by side. Okay, so uh, I have created a empty DVC live demo folder and inside that we need to create uh, some more folders, okay? So I'll share this code again with you, so no need to worry. So uh, what we need to do basically, the very first thing we need to create a data folder where we'll be keeping our data.xml file. Okay, and let me get the data.xml file where it is. Uh, it is somewhere, so here I have a demo and inside data, I have this data.xml, okay. So I will copy this and I will paste it here inside data. So, okay, so let, let me paste uh, from the physical location. So I'm here and this is uh, my, folder okay so i am pasting it here so the moment i pasted it here it will be available now you see the data.xml is available so i've already explained what is data.xml okay and next thing is like we need to create a src folder so i will create outside here so src so which will contain all my source code okay and in src as you see so we have these different steps so the very first thing is like prepare data then feature engineering then model training then evaluate Okay, so the very first thing what I will be doing basically I inside SRC, I will be creating a prepare.py file. Okay, so let me create a prepare.py file. Okay, so prepare.py file. So this is a py file. So that is a Python file. And then here uh, I need to, uh, so I can copy this complete code, but as I said, I need to uh, have uh, these things separately. For example, uh, where we want to store, this should not be decided inside the function, okay? So we should pass these uh, storage locations separately from external world so that we can control this where we want to save the data. So that's where these all things will be separated out. So for that, uh, we need to have prepared this in such a manner that um, this all thing is separated out. So for example, if I little bit expand this, so here you can see. So we have uh, imported this OS, uh, regular existences, uh, XML, or YAML, all those things, okay, because uh, so importantly the YAML, because we'll have all those uh, configuration defined in YAML, and then I will pass them as a parameter. Okay, so this is the uh, kind of same thing basically. So uh, whatever you see here in the process data, the same thing I have written here, but in a little bit uh, structured manner. So for example, here, if you see, so we have input lines, target tag and split. Okay, but here I have, uh, uh, let me expand this. So we have input lines and target tag and split fine. But here I'm also saying what is my output location for train and what is my output location for test data, right? So because this uh, process proposed, this prepare uh, uh, step in the pipeline will prepare the data and it is store uh, the uh, uh, train and test CSV separately, right? And that's where here it is written. Okay, so input line. So that's where like, so this this part is known as like a dog string and it defines, okay, what this method is doing basically, okay? So here input lines, like list of input lines and out train. So it is a file like output file for the training data set. And this is output file for the testing data set. This is a target tag. It will have like whether it is uh, belongs to R or not, R programming language. And then of course, this is the split ratio, okay? And then further here it is, so here you not see any hard-coded uh, parameter, okay? So uh, for example, here uh, I have this if condition. So basically uh, if, uh, so I'm getting just random um, 
number generated here and if it is so if split ratio is like 0 0.20 for example and if that is greater than that then it will just uh, chunk out into train data set else it will chunk out to the test data set okay and finally this attribute so this will read the uh, lines from data.xml so these so the all tags so for example uh, these things id post type id accepted so these are the tags right so they are known as attribute here and with the help of attribute if i want to extract the ids then we can extract and same way like, like tag so if i am extracting the tags and comparing if it is similar to target tag that is r then i will return one because it belongs to the r programming language else it is zero okay and then title then body and then title plus body so that will generate our text okay and then this manner i am generating my train and test csv Okay, and then here uh, in the main method, so because uh, this is the py file, so we should have a main method which will call this one, right? And here I am defining a parameter dot xml. Okay, so here I should have one more file, uh, not inside uh, the SRC but outside. So param dot yaml. Okay, so this will have all our parameters defined. So whatever parameters. Uh, we want to have basically okay so for example what is your split ratio what is your seed value okay and what are the uh, hyper parameters so all those things so for example here in prepare phase we will be using a split ratio of 20 and seed you can give just some random value okay so that every time so for, uh, what is you seed used for for example you are splitting the data set right? every time you'll get the similar number of rows with the help of seed and then in, in featureize phase we'll be using the number of features and n-grams Okay, so maybe we can start with one and then we can in second run, we can just increase this and in train phase. Um, so we'll be using seed again and the number of estimators and minimum split ratio. Okay, so these are a part of our parameters.yaml. Okay, and then here we have parameter.yaml. So this is just a warning because of uh, linting. Okay, so you can ignore that one. Okay, that is not important as of now. And then of course, we have some conditions set here because uh, we need to have exception handling very, very uh, uh, proper manner so that uh, if anything comes uh, as a surprise, uh, then it, it is logged. And uh, while debugging, if any error is coming while debugging, you get to know, okay, this error was uh, because of what reason. Okay, so that's where like these all things are there. Uh, guys, I'm not explaining here the Python programming language. I'm not explaining here uh, how to train the machine learning model. So that's why that part I'm skipping a, a bit early. Otherwise, in this video will take a two hours duration, right? So that's where uh, my agenda is like to tell you the concept behind data pipeline. Okay, and now uh, this uh, this is kind of exception handling, and then here I am. So I have already read the parameter dot yaml in params, and then in parameter is split. I am getting this a split ratio, and then of course I am setting the seed value. Okay, and then here um, when I am running this uh, py file, so for example, if you see the terminal, right? So how you will run so normal Python file? So src slash prepare dot py. Okay, and then you pass the parameter. Okay, so indexing start from zero the first parameter will be a zeroth location so for example first i'm passing some string okay and then second i'm passing uh, data slash data dot xml so likewise i will run this code okay so these are kind of uh, known as dependencies okay so that's a data dot xml so this uh, will come as an input csv here input xml here okay so that's how you will run but i'm not going to run this file independently i will run in a pipeline manner so that's where here it is not required so these all we will define as a command Okay, so let's first understand, then we'll run one by one everything. Okay, so that's where here in input, I'm getting data.xml and then I'm defining my output path. So output path for train, output path for testing. So that's where you remember here, if I show you, so in here, so these were hard coded, right? Uh, within the process phase, but here I, uh, I just uh, uh, extracted them outside. So now here from the main method, I'm I'm defining this. Okay, what is my uh, data path? What is my, sorry, what is my train path? What is my test path? Even if you have a more dynamism, then this also you can pass with uh, help of uh, parameter.yaml. And from here, you can read this path so that you have more control where to store, right? So it's up to you what level of dynamism, how, what level of control we want to achieve, okay? And then finally, I have defined train.csv, test.csv. And of course, if that directory not exists, then I, I'm creating that directory for prepared okay and then here we have input lines and with open so or uh, read lines so it will read the xml and then all the input lines will be uh, uh, contained inside input lines okay and then train uh, opening the train csv opening the test csv and then passing this variable here and this you see this is the target tag r okay which represents the 
our programming language okay and finally if everything is done then we'll just close those files okay and this, so this is the uh, code for your prepare.py okay and then similarly next uh, once the my data is prepared as a train test we need to featureize that one right so that's where we need to create featureize json.py Okay, featureization.py and in featureization.py we'll again have the same code but in more structured manner okay so let me copy it here okay so now of course uh, these are some uh, uh, libraries i'm importing okay and then i will be using count vectorizer and tfid vectorizer the very first thing uh, method is like so again this is part of this uh, this chunk so this uh, feature engine okay so this whole code i'm structurizing and kind of extracting those uh, hard coded parameter outside from this method and those will pass with the help of parameter.yaml okay so let's understand a bit that as well so the very first method we have get data so this uh, from data so we'll pass those train csv or test csv and we'll convert them into the data frame okay so here we have data and encoding header delimiter and names id label and text okay so these three so you remember in the prepare.py file here i have created this pid label and then this title and body is con uh, uh, combined into the text field right so that's where in feature adjacent we have these uh, three uh, fields uh, as a data frame okay and then uh, we have a save matrix method so let's uh, understand first uh, these two methods okay so main method so first is like we'll generate uh, and save train features so in generate and train save method well, basically we'll pass the train csv and we'll have the train output path and then bag of word and tfidf with the help of bag of word and tfidf we are kind of generating the tf count vectorizer and then converting to the sparse matrix and then saving that sparse matrix for train features into the train output location okay and then input is like train.psv which we have created here so here you see we have created uh, these two files so uh, have out train and out test okay so here so like train.csv and test.csv right so like that so in featureization so here i am basically uh, getting the train input uh, get df so this is the data frame and then uh, i am converting that uh, all the text into the lower and then getting value so all the train words will come and then i'm fitting into the bag of words representation and then i'm transforming these all train words into the bag of word matrix representation so we'll get a binary matrix okay and then finally i'm doing the tfidf so basically it will generate the term frequency inverted document frequency for each words so basically the how many times that word has appeared in a single page and in oral documents okay so that's the tfidf vectorizer and then finally i'm just transforming and i will get the matrix representation and that i'm passing to the save matrix method then it will be saved basically so that's what i'm doing in the in that save generate and save train features and then i'm calling the save matrix then here in save matrix i'm expecting a data frame i expecting the matrix which i generated in a part of uh, say uh, this uh, this method okay and then names what are the names basically so a list of feature names and then output okay so that's where here this is a representation for a sparse matrix okay and then id so as type of integer and then i'm transposing basically okay so this all you know basically let me not go through in detail because otherwise it will take a lot of time so ultimately we are saving this sparse matrix of input features okay so that's what and then uh, if i run the same code uh, for the testing features then it will generate the same thing for uh, test.csv uh, as well and finally from the main method so this is very important basically here we are handling the uh, all the parameters so what we are doing basically again we are reading parameter.yaml if you open this parameter.yaml then here you see so i am giving max number of features would be 100 it should not go beyond that and n gram value is one basically okay and then here uh, i read the parameters and then uh, after that again some uh, exception handling that's fine okay and then input path so again uh, if, uh, when you run the command to execute this file so uh, it, you give certain parameter like zeroth position oneth position second position third position like that okay so in first position i am having the input path and then second position i am having the output path where my output that is a, a sparse matrix will be saved okay and then here you see like a train uh, input is like uh, input path so that is like uh, nothing but the data slash prepared so uh, because here uh, if you see uh, this data prepared okay this is the input path 
okay and then uh, in path i have defined that three data prepares and that will give uh, as a part of argument okay and then appending the train.csv and same for test csv and these sparse matrix will be serialized and saved in the train.pickle format and test.pickle format okay and these are the max feature and n-grams and these finally we are passing in the bag of words so that it will generate same level of features and of course the, with the n-gram value as one Okay, and then TFID vectorizer. And then finally, from here, I'm calling that method uh, for training feature and for testing feature. And finally, we generated the uh, feature set for our uh, model training. Okay, so second step is also achieved. So let me save that one, okay. And then third step will be, so if I go to that uh, notebook, so third step is like model training. So now I'll be doing the model training part. So model training has this sort of code. So for that, I need to create a fold of, uh, I mean, uh, here file so train.csv okay so sorry not csv train.py because it is a py file okay so in train.py we need to have that code basically so let me again put that code here so it is the same code whatever you see in the uh, uh, notebook uh, Jupyter notebook but uh, with a more structured manner so for example here i have a method train and then main method which will call the train method okay so uh, in the uh, train i am passing the seed value and number of estimators and minimum split and matrix so these all values are coming from here so now in See here in train, I have defined the what is the seed value, what are the number of estimators, okay, and then uh, what is the minimum split value, okay. So these are the hyperparameter which I am passing here, and then matrix, of course, what are the matrix uh, we have generated for train data for test data, okay. So here and label I will get from matrix at the first uh, column, okay. So that is the label, and remaining data will be input data, okay, and then. Will run the normal a random forest classifier, and if you do clf.fit, it will be trained. Okay, and then from the main method, what I'm doing basically again, I'm same thing. I'm loading the uh, parameter file and the which uh, which uh, parameter the train parameter. Okay, so that's what I'm defining here. Okay, and then here some exception handling, and then here uh, with input uh, and output, and then seed value from parameter.yaml file and number of estimator and minimum split. Okay, and input and output. This is again the input will be the uh, here featureization. So like uh, prepared allocation. Okay, so uh, data dot prepared. So for that, so output will be data dot prepared, and here input will be data dot uh, take uh, data dot uh, prepare. Sorry, uh, let let me revise. Okay, hold on. So uh, for prepare, uh, I am uh, uh, preparing the data and storing data slash prepared location. Okay, so here inside data right now there is nothing. So once you execute this sort of code, so data dot slash prepared method uh, uh, location will be created where output of prepare will be stored. And then featureization will uh, take input from prepared, that is data slash prepared location, and then output in data slash uh, feature location. Okay, and that data slash feature location will be input for this. So that's where here input will be data slash um, feature. Okay, and output data slash train. Okay, so that will be, and then we are storing a model. So see here train.pickle, so this is a sparse matrix in serialized manner for train data. Okay, and then uh, we are calling the train and then it will uh, train the model and it will return this classifier and that's what I'm dumping here in model.pickle format. Okay, so that's where uh, I train the model as well. And then finally, once the model is trained, we need to evaluate the model. So that's one last thing basically, we need to have evaluate.py sorry evaluate.py file. Okay, so let me create evaluate.py file as well. So let me have one more py file evaluate.py. And then it will use the same code, whatever available here as part of evaluate. So here, so this code with the more structured manner. <clears throat> so let me copy that code as well. <clears throat> Okay, so now here, uh, if you see, so I have some libraries imported. So these are the normal <clears throat> machine learning libraries. Okay, and then here DVC Live. So with the help of DVC Live, whatever evaluation I'm doing, basically whatever experimentation we are doing, so we'll be tracking that experimentation. Okay, and then Matplotlib, you know, basically, and then Pickle OS, all these things, you know. Okay, then we have the, uh, how many methods we have? So we have these three methods. So first is evaluate and then save importance plot. So for example, if we want to generate a feature importance and we want to save that one as well okay so these all methods which you have already prepared as part of your 
your uh, notebook okay so i am just uh, putting all together here in a structured project format so that we can convert them into the uh, pipelines okay and now you see like we have evaluate and here uh, i have a doc string which explains okay what this uh, method will do all things so model i'm expecting the model which i got as the output of train.py and matrix that is uh, here test matrix because again text data will be evaluated and we can evaluate on train data as well just for uh, making sure it is uh, working fine okay so it could be a train uh, uh, pickle uh, file or a test pickle file for that data okay that will that is the output of featureization um, uh, step and then a split ratio will come from parameter dot and live I i'm passing the instance of dvc live so to track everything okay and say path we can give like where we want to save these things okay so that's fine and label again from matrix the first uh, uh, column that's the label and then remaining is the our uh, input data for uh, evaluation and then prediction by class so model or predict prova so this is normal machine learning method which we use for uh, pro predicting the probability and then predicting by class it will generate the class zero or one okay and then uh, remaining uh, this part of code is very important basically so this will do the uh, kind of uh, live recording of your experiments okay so there are two things basically here guys so so dvc live have uh, released a new tool called dvc studio okay so for to use that dvc studio you need to have a uh, now what you need to have basically you need to have a login to the dvc studio and you need to be onboarded there so onboarding takes a little bit time okay so when you so you are onboarded by the team of dvc studio then you can see those experiments live in the web browser similar to mlflow experiment tracking okay but for now because uh, they are on their onboarding process uh, takes a bit time so that's where the work around is basically you can install a dvc uh, within your visual studio code and here itself you can see all the experiments tracked okay so for this uh, part of code what you need to do basically if you go to the uh, extensions and here if you type dvc okay and then if you just uh, so uh, need to install this dvc so i have already installed but in your case it will uh, come as a install okay so the moment you install then here if you go so like this you can uh, set up all the experiments and everything here okay so uh, meanwhile i'm explaining next thing just install this uh, dvc extension this is a very very good extension okay and now coming back Okay, so coming back to this evaluate.py. So let me explain the, how this DVC live works basically. Okay, so what it does basically here, uh, so this still here is normal machine learning uh, stuff. So average precision score, I'm passing labels and prediction and it will give me the average precision, uh, sorry, average pre uh, precision value, yes. And this will return the uh, ROC AUC, curve receiver operating uh, characteristics and area under curve. Okay, so this is ROC AUC value. And now uh, I need to uh, make sure, okay. So no, uh, if live.summary, if live.summary is not set, then of course we need to set the live.summary and here we can have average uh, precision value and average AUC value, okay. and here over, as once we have instantiated this down now we can log this basically so here basically you can see we are creating a json or dictionary kind of object key value pair and then i'm logging live dot summary so like in ml flow we have like a ml flow dot log uh, parameters or log artifacts log model all those methods we have right so here also for logging a general uh, uh, artifacts we have summary so a live dot summary give any parameter name here so here i'm logging average dot average precision and then a, a split ratio with so that we know okay what was the split ratio and then average precision value and then ROC value okay and then uh, so these are the general uh, artifacts and if you want to log the some plots okay so we can uh, log the plots as well so we have so live expose log x scale and plot method and with that uh, you can you just define what with against which name you want to log and then we can pass the labels we can pass the predictions and the name ROC split so this will come from this Okay, so we have ROC split value. Uh, da, 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 da. So a split value is coming from parameter.yaml and then uh, ROC anyways, we are giving the name. So with that name, it will log that uh, plot, okay? And then uh, if you do, uh, so here, so this is just the input and then we need to basically pass some more things. So if we want to plot live as, so for example, this was ROC plot and then we want to plot one more thing, basically a uh, precision record. So likewise, we can plot any number of plot, whatever we want to have basically, okay? So we are plotting here three, ROC, IUC plot, precision recall plot and confusion matrix, okay? 
So this is the precision recall plot to plot the precision recall. What all things we need basically labels, predictions. Okay, and then I'm just giving the name and then not drop if you want to drop intermediate values all. Okay, and then confusion matrix again it will require label and prediction by class and based on that it will just uh, create the uh, uh, SQL and plot for confusion matrix. Okay, and then ultimately we also want to have a feature importance. Then again uh, it will accept the live instance because we want to do the live tracking. Okay, and then model and feature names basically. Okay, and then here uh, this all is like uh, machine learning stuff basically. So model or feature important, it will uh, return the importance of the features with some percentage values. And if we can have that in the series format, so okay, it's feature importance. And then we can plot the bar chart and then we can save that as the image importance.png. And now if we have that Im Im uh, image as a PNG available with us, so how we can log the image basically, that's what is shown here. So live dot log image with the log image part, we can log the image as well. Okay, so now we have created all that um, things and next uh, in the main method we can simply so we, this is some part of exception handling and then what is the model file that is the model dot pickle okay and then where is our train uh, sparse matrix where is our test sparse matrix in serialized man manage okay and then we, these three artifacts we need to open so we need to open the model we need to open the train i need to open the test basically okay and then evaluate train and test data sets so here, uh, what we are doing basically uh, with live. So, uh, so I'm using with keywords so that immediately we are outside of this. So live instance will be closed, and so that we are optimizing the memory, and there is no leakage of memory. Okay. So these are the best practices of Python. That's fine. I'm assuming you already know that thing. And here, uh, yeah, with evaluate the method, I'm passing this parameter. I'm just generating uh, so for evaluating for the train data set for the test data. So that's why I'm calling this two times. Okay. And then ultimately we can dump feature importance in the save importance plot okay so with that all set so with that all set of what we need to do basically we have generated evaluate.py and now we need to so we have structurized this code in a very proper manner and now what we need to do basically we need to run certain commands if you go here okay and come here okay so here um, uh, so we have understood a uh, text classification, what we are doing basically. Now we switched from Jupyter Notebook to the uh, proper ID that is VS Code or PyCharm. And we have created this folder structure, right? So we have data, we have parameter.yaml and we have source code. So this all is uh, done, right? And now uh, the main part will start that is the pipeline creation. So, okay. So because we are going to use DVC for pipeline creation. So that's where we need to have a uh, DVC in a slice in that uh, repository. Okay. So for that, what we need to do basically DVC works together with the git uh, uh, command. So that's where that repository should be uh, initialized as git as well. Okay. So now let me uh, do this thing side by side. Okay. And uh, uh, let me so this uh, code part is finished and now the uh, important part is like uh, co converting this whole uh, project in the, into the pipeline so that we can reproduce that pipeline in the uh, production system. That is very, very important, okay? So the very first thing what we need to do, so let me just show everything. So here uh, we have data folder, we have parameter.yaml and we have source folder, that's fine, perfect. And our uh, environment that MLOps is ready, whatever we have created with the help of Conda. So that's the very first step here. Right, so this environment creation. So that's what same environment I have activated here as well. And now we need to do what we need to do basically. First, we need to initialize git. Okay, so git in it. So now this repository is become the git repository. This local, okay, on this one. And now after that, we need to initialize DVC as well. Now I have initialized DVC. Okay, once you initialize DVC, it will show something like this. Okay, so I'm expanding this terminal block because now main work we will do in the terminal. Okay, so don't be worried. So let me do it a little bit. Okay, so that it is visible. It is not going to the bottom of your screen. Okay, so now uh, you see this uh, git is initialized. Okay, so now let's again see what is there. In, in the folder structure. So now uh, we have, we had the data folder, we had the parameter.yaml, we had the SRC folder, okay. And now uh, it has, with the DVC initialization, it has created DVC ignore and dot DVC folder. And with git initialization, it has created uh, dot git. I have used a hyphen A so that it uh, it is showing us the hidden files folders as well. The folders or files are starting with dot, they are hidden basically, okay. So that's the thing. So now if uh, we just see uh, what is there inside DVC. 
So if I hit enter, so inside DVC, what I have, I have a config file, I have a git ignore file and temp. So forget about temp file, so config and git ignore are important. So inside the config, basically, so with so with all these machine learning, so as I said, in reproducibility, we need to uh, version data, we need to version code, and we need to version model, right? These three artifacts, and then of course the configuration, those parameters. Okay. So that's where to version the data. So inside .dvc, we have something called config. So here we need to define, okay, what is our remote repository where we are going to um, uh, version our data files. Okay, so that's where uh, inside DVC it is there. And git ignore basically the moment you uh, version data file, it will uh, tell, uh, it will mention inside git ignore, okay, don't version those data file inside git repository because all these uh, parameter, all these configuration as well as the code part, these things we are going to uh, version inside our uh, git repository. And uh, the heavy uh, loaded file that is data and model, we are going to version with the help of DVC. Okay, so that's uh, it. And then uh, git ignore and all those things, you know, basically, okay. And in, of course, in DVC ignore, we will mention, okay, don't uh, uh, version this SRC, uh, YAML, all those configuration or code related file. Okay, so that's the thing. So now uh, what is next thing? Basically, we need to uh, uh, set up our uh, remote storage. So if I uh, go to my uh, Google console here, so, console and if I log in there then I will show you uh, just give me a minute okay uh, I need to log into the Google Cloud platform Yes, so now uh, I'm inside this uh, Google Cloud platform, okay, so with my email ID, I have logged in, okay. And now our project selected is like ML demo, demo okay. But here I need to go inside uh, GS bucket, okay. So I can search with the Alba bucket, cloud storage, then it will take me to this uh, location, okay. And here, if you see, I have uh, two uh, uh, buckets, like DVC07 and DVC08. So if you open DVC07, so uh, there is some content here. So I have already uh, versioned some of the data file here, okay. But if you go back and if you open DVC08, it will it is empty. And that is what I'm going to use for today's uh, session, okay. And here, uh, one more thing, guys. So if you do GSUtil ls, then here it will show you like what all uh, buckets are available in your repository. And to have this command gsutil ls work for you, you need to set up gsutil locally in your system. So if you refer just the previous video, which I released yesterday, okay, there I have shown like how to set up gsutil locally and then uh, access those gs bucket locally in your uh, machine. Okay, so that's where I'm doing GSUtil ls and in a moment it will show, yeah. So now I have these two uh, buckets on which I have shown you here, okay. And if you do a little bit GSUtil things, ls and gs uh, dvc 07 then it will show you the content inside. And so now it is showing file, okay. But if I do for 08, it will show empty because there is nothing inside uh, dvc 08, right? So that's what DVC 08 I'm going to use. So now uh, the thing is like, I need to, as I was saying, I need to add this, uh, let me open that reference so that you can just correlate what we are going to do next. So we need to uh, do the DVC remote, okay. So if you just uh, run here, DVC, uh, so DVC uh, remote add, my, uh, give some name, my remote, and then uh, the path of the remote. Okay, so here I am having GS and then um, DVC 08. Okay, and this is my remote. The moment I ran, so it has uh, gone inside the config file. And if I do DVC config hyphen L, so with this command, you can see, okay, so this uh, the remote URL is set up. Okay, and it, guys, in your case, these two things won't be there. 
okay in fact these three things okay you will have uh, in fact these four things sorry okay you will have only this uh, remote url set as gs bucket or azure bucket or whatever bucket you want to use okay but in my case i have this as well because in my other project i have also done like uh, dvc studio login the moment i do this dvc studio login so it will uh, authorize my uh, dvc studio login and by default it will just do these entries here okay but no worries uh, I, this is not the step here so this is a bit later step so that's where i will tell you okay so forget about this thing and it is not going to impact you in any way for time now okay so you have set up this uh, remote repository that is uh, good enough okay now the next thing is like we need to um, convert these uh, uh, prepare featureization evaluate and train into the pipeline so that all are communicating with each other okay so what we need to do basically so i have this command dvc stage okay um, DV, so dvc stage add uh, hyphen n prepare so basically prepare is nothing but the uh, name of the stage basically so i'm giving the stage name as prepare and then i'm passing the parameter hyphen p so prepare dot seed prepare dot split so basically guys the moment i run this file so it generates a dvc dot yaml because this pipeline is going to be created under dvc right so under dvc functionalities so it will so like we have parameter dot yaml it will create a dvc dot yaml file and which will have all the configuration of your uh uh, pipeline and this pipeline will accept certain parameter as well so that's what these parameters are these one so hyphen p so prepare dot seed prepare dot split okay so it will uh, just uh, mention these parameter into tvc dot yaml file and the next um, dependencies so what are the dependencies basically so for this stage the first dependency is your prepare dot py file okay and the second dependency is your data dot xml file so because prepare dot py file will take data dot xml and prepare the data train dot csv right and once this data is prepared we need to have an output so data prepared right that's where i said so if you go to a uh, prepare field so here so in here so with the help of the argument so for example here uh, we have data prepared data prepared okay so all these things so this you can give like this okay so output so data prepared so here i'm telling okay so my output will be stored in data slash prepared location okay and finally this is the command to run this so once we are running the pipeline so for every file run it will take the command like this okay so let me run this as well okay and before that uh before i'm doing that let's do git status okay and so these files are modified and we have a data.xml file as well so let me add dvc add data slash data dot xml so let me add this, I mean, version this data file. Okay, so that I am versioning original data source. Okay, so that uh, in meanwhile, when we are doing any operations, it is intact, I mean, with version tagged. Okay, so I'm just doing data add. So now if you see git uh, status, so you'll have some more files here. So for example, uh, so we have, it. so DVC config is modified. Let me show you ls hyphen lrt hyphen f. Okay. And here, if you go ls slash dvc slash. Okay. So if I do ls. Okay. So one cache is generated. And if you see uh, ls uh, data. So here, dvc dot uh, data dot xml dot dvc might have created. So ls. Yeah. So we have data dot xml and data dot xml dot dvc this file is created okay so this file has all the configuration settings everything uh, we, uh, kind of uh, pointers to this data.xml which will be stored in your remote repository okay and this will go to uh, your in git repository because this is the configuration file and this will go to your remote uh, physical location that is your uh, gs bucket okay that's what i wanted to tell you okay and now what we need to do basically we can uh, um, do get a status that's fine Okay, so this uh, what we I did. Okay, it should be Git. Okay, Git status. So we what we can do we can do add all. Okay, so we can do Git add hyphen hyphen all. So it will add everything now. If I run Git status, it will not have anything. And now I I can do Git commit. Hyphen m initial commit. 
initial commit before pipeline definition okay so i committed this thing okay and i need to post this as well so i will post in a moment okay so don't worry for that we need to create a git repository so i just committed and it stays locally so that's fine okay so now the thing is like we need to run that dvc at a first stage i'll done that command okay now here i am just uh, uh, creating a stage named prepare and as i explained i am passing these uh, things okay so the moment i run this so what it will do it will uh, create a dvc.yaml file now if i just show you git status so now it has created it has done some modification on git ignore because uh, after every command it will just add some configuration into git ignore because that need not to be triggered uh, that need not to be maintained in the uh, uh, git repository because prepare phase will generate some data right trained csv test csv so this should be automatically tracked in uh, dvc version control mechanism not in the uh, git because git will control only the files i'm sorry only the code and configuration file and that's where here you see we have dvc.yaml if i show you the content of dvc.yaml so now you see here so we have generated to run only the prepare phase so in the prepare phase the, this is the command which will be ran uh, which will run when we are executing so right now i'm not executing the pipeline i'm just defining the pipelines we are in the definition phase of the pipeline okay and then here now what are the dependency so these are data.xml prepare.py and what are the parameters it is this one and what will be the output this so this configuration yaml file is generated as the stage of prepare okay and similarly what we will be doing will we generate the stage for uh, featureization okay so let me generate the stage for featureization Ta -ta -ta. okay so now if uh, it is done and if i show you the dvc.yaml it will have this featureization phase as well okay so now we have prepared so i have already explained to you and in featureization i have this command so when i will run this pipeline it will execute this command and these are the dependencies basically okay and these are the parameters and this is this will be the output for this featureization phase perfect right and that's why let me quickly add this uh uh this train phase as well so here prepare i ran this featureization i ran and this train i'm going to run okay so let me run this train phase as well okay so now training is also ran and now if you see so here this train of uh, stage is also created so guys so this uh so slowly i'm creating this uh, complete uh, dag directed cyclic graph for example if i just show you dvc dag so this will take input from this uh uh dvc.yaml file and with the hello.yaml file it is generating this so this is the data file and then we are preparing then feature featureization and then training okay and now uh after that if you see git status this, there are a lot of things uh, which are modified so git ignore okay so it's a data and then parent git ignore and dvc.yaml okay so we can again so and do uh these things uh, for example what we can do uh git add hyphen hyphen all okay and then git commit hyphen m uh, pipeline definition and you know, definition till training train stage okay so till here i have created the pipeline right so now if you see git is Status, so everything is staged, so nothing will be here. So now, guys, uh, another important thing is like as I said, I have already uh, versioned the data. So if I quickly go to the uh, this one and our so DVC 08, okay. If I refresh, then here you will see files, MD5, all those things. Okay. So let me refresh that one. And if everything is perfect done correctly, so if I go inside that one. Okay, so I have just done add. I have not did the DVC push. So for that, I need to run DVC push. Okay, so the moment I do DVC push, it will push the uh, record here. Okay, so let me just do it. Uh, so it is giving some error. Let, let me see it and we'll fix it. No worries. Okay, this happens. Okay, so here you see like the error message clearly saying, okay, so we have not set up the default remote. So in your case, you might not get this error because in your case, if you see DVC config YAML, so you will have only this thing. Okay, so in my case, I have these many things. Okay, so that's the reason I need to 
tell uh, TVC, okay, which is my default remote. Okay, so that's where what we can do. We can do TVC remote and default. So what is my default? So my remote, so this one, right? I need to define this remote name, my remote. Okay, the moment I run this, it works. And now I can do the DVC post. And it will work. So now you see it is collecting and pushing and then pushing to the GS bucket, right? And in a moment, the moment it is done. So yeah, it is done. And now if I, so it is clearly saying, okay, one file is pushed. And now if I do the refresh, then here you must see the, um, some content. So it is coming, it is now, yeah, perfect. So now it can, let me uh, maximize this. So inside DVC files are created and inside file, you will have MD5 and inside MD5, it is having 22, another folder. And inside it, this is our main content. So if you download this content, then you will see the data dot uh, XML file you can download and you will have that uh, data dot XML available with you. Okay. So like that, uh, if you go to that folder, Okay. So that's not important that you can download and you can see. Okay, but let me quickly see also. Let's not skip that. Okay, so this is like a MD5 uh, format file. Okay, so for that, so if I just, uh, uh, I just double click that one. So this one, okay. And it is opening into the text format. So this file. You see here, so here we have first row ID, then second row ID, then third row ID, so like that. Okay, so if you double click this, so it will open this one. Okay, so likewise, you can download this file. Okay, so let me close this one. Okay, so you can download that one. So now, uh, if I go back to my uh, VS code here, Okay, so now uh, DVC push is done. Okay, so now another next thing is like I am uh, maintaining my version in the DVC uh, for data version, and I need to uh, version my uh, code stuff and configuration stuff in the Git repository. So let me open my Git repository. Okay, so here I am inside my Git repository and inside repository section, and if I create a new repository, okay, so I am creating a new repository called DVC underscore live and it's called demo okay you can give any name okay and that's fine uh, i can make it public and create a repository okay and now it is saying if you uh, so uh, uh, because i already have some content uh, existing in my local repository so i need to uh, connect with this repository for that like i have defined the remote for my uh, dvc i need to define the remote for my git as well okay so here if i go back and i uh, run this command. Okay, and so here what I'm doing, I'm adding the git remote. So before that, uh, let me show you, if I do git remote hyphen v, then it won't have anything, okay? So that's where uh, remote is not attached to it. So now I'm attaching this remote. So if I hit enter and then it will uh, do, and then now if I just do git remote hyphen v, it will show me, okay, this uh, 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 git repository is added, okay? So this is the git repository. And the next thing is like, I need to run, uh, change the branch name locally. So by default, uh, if you initialize the uh, git locally, so branch name is master. So I need to rename the branch name to the uh, main so that I can map to the main branch of this one and I can just push the code, okay? So git branch uh, main, okay? And then I will push using this, okay? So now if I simply uh, do this, so everything will be pushed. So now, so guys, one more thing. So here, uh, while you are running the push command, so it might ask you to authorize, authenticate. So it will ask your username and it will ask you the token. So that you need to provide, okay? And one more thing, guys, here, this data.xml file and corresponding data.xml.dvc file, okay? It has some uh, configuration, like here, I am committing the workflow and it might have some, It you will be uh, kind of uh, prompted with something like, okay, it is, uh, uh, trying to put some secrets okay so do you want to allow so for that you need to uh, 
change your git settings a little bit and if when you create the token so you can also um, check the workflow box okay in the token okay but if you get any problem just let me know in the comment box i will show you that part as well okay but if i include everything then it video will be anyway lengthier okay so now uh, if i go back and refresh this kit so now here you will see everything is pushed but you see in data data.xml file won't be there data.xml.dvc this configuration file is there but data.xml this heavy loaded file is not there because that has gone to the uh, right place where it should be and that right place is nothing but the uh, uh, gs bucket okay perfect so now we are on track now everything is set up so let me do one final get status uh, dvc config i have not added so let me do git add hyphen all okay and git commit hyphen m okay uh, just uh, before the pipeline run you can define any message okay so now i have just committed so now git status won't have anything okay now everything is uh, staged at least okay and now if i do um, uh, dvc repro so now uh, if you uh, till now if you see the data folder okay so data folder has only these files okay i don't have uh, let me maximize this i don't have uh, any uh, output of these uh, stages right so now the main thing comes guys dvc repro okay if i do dvc repro so dvc repro is the command to reproduce everything okay now i will just do dvc repro so now you see here so let's observe the output so dvc repro is saying uh, data dot xml dot is didn't change so it is skipping this okay and running stage prepare so it is uh, running the stage prepare and with this command it and of course log file it will generate and then it will generate featureization with this command okay and then this is the output i mean whatever with the standard error uh, so if you go to featureization you can validate everything okay so here in featureization we are uh, printing something like this okay the input data frame of this and like this we have a standard error format in everywhere so that's what these are the print statement and then in the train phase it is running the training and then it's generating the input matrix size x matrix size y matrix size all these things okay it has generated everything okay and now if you see git status okay so now it has generated a dvc.log folder okay and uh, if you see uh, in the data so in the data folder so it has a test.pickle train.pickle so these are the uh, serialization uh, uh, sparse matrix generated out of featureization and then in prepared phase it has generated test.csv and train.csv these are uh, tab separated file right and guys here in git status if you do git status these newly created files are not shown because these are the data files and these are the handled in within the dvc automatically okay and that's where if you see if you go inside data folder cat um, data slash let me see what is there and then you do git ignore okay and if you read so here in the data and git ignore file it is saying okay don't uh, version data.xml within the git don't version anything with prepare don't version anything with the features so that's where in git status these newly created files are not shown rather they will go in your uh, gs bucket remote storage right so that's where and if you see dvc tag so this tag is created so like this this is the pipeline okay so now guys another important thing everything is done and now if i do some changes on my parameter for example i want to uh, further tune my hyperparameter and then i went inside my uh, parameter.yaml file and here i changed a number of uh, so max number of features to 200 and n grams to 2 and now see this is the featureization and it is not impacting the prepare phase so that's where if i now change my uh, re sorry rerun my dvc repro command that is a reproducible command it will skip this prepare phase and it will run the feature phase okay so okay just give me a minute Okay, so now we need to do the escape, then we will come out of this TVC DAG. And now I'm um, again, uh, let me save. I have not saved the parameter.xml. So now I, I saved with this, right? And now I will do repro, DVC repro. 
Okay. So now you see, so this has not changed and prepare is not changed. So that's where uh, prepare, sorry, let me go up. So prepared and change, that's where it is keeping. So that's the advantage of running this code in pipeline manner. So it is very resource optimal and efficient. So because every run, will require certain resources, certain memory. And now we are skipping prepare because it is not needed to rerun. And that's where whatever resource consumed by prepare phase will be uh, uh, saved. Okay, they will not be used, right? And that's where and it is running featureized phase. And because featureized phase, uh, uh, whatever it generates, that uh, training phase is dependent on and your feature set will get changed because before it has 100 features, now it will have 200 features. So that's it. Train phase will again rerun. Okay, and now it has rerun. So that's the advantage of this DVC repro. And that's how you can uh, reproduce the pipeline. And guys, here uh, you can keep on uh, changing the parameter.yaml file and you can keep on uh, running DVC dot, uh, sorry, DVC repro. And then you can keep on getting all these things uh, uh, generator okay and here uh, with all these in place when you are creating the stage so uh, as i shown you dvc dot dag so how these all things are getting created so uh, the moment you create the stages you dvc uh, add a stage so these stages are getting created so first stage is prepare second is prepare featureize third is train okay i have not added the uh, evaluate phase because the video duration is already very lengthy so i am going to create another uh, video in continuation to this okay which will be important and that's where i will do the uh, i will add the evaluation phase as well and then we'll show you the experiment tracking okay so till now i have shown you how to reproduce the code how to reproduce the pipeline and then in next immediate video i am going to show you how to do the experiment tracking that is very 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 important okay guys so i hope uh, this all things are clear and one last thing if you like my video then please don't forget to like subscribe and uh, share my channel within the ml communities and whoever is learning this Okay, and your feedbacks and comments are most welcome. So I think that's it for today's video. And if you have any uh, question, then feel free to ask me with the help of comment section. So thank you.